What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. And I'm here with my beautiful mom, who I love so much and cherish. And guys, um, as you guys see the title, you guys know what this video is about. And my mom is going to be on the spot today. And I don't know how she feels about it being on the spot, but the camera is on. And I was always that curious kid that wondering, where, where was my dad? Because as you guys know my story, my dad left from when I was a baby, from when I was young. And my mom was my dad and my mom, and I thank you for doing doing your job to take care of all the four of us and taking care of me, you know? I really appreciate you for that. So she stepped up to be my mom and dad. Growing up, that's all I know, was my mom be my mom and my dad at the same time. So when Father's Day come, I'm giving her a card for Father's Day as well and Mother's Day as well, guys. So um, I have my beautiful mom next to me, and I've been curious since, a, since I was a kid. And this is not something that only me that I felt as a kid, like wondering like real what why my dad leave, what what caused him to leave, like you know, he started blaming himself, like did he did he leave because of me or whatever. You know, so I feel like today is a very, very exciting day. I feel like all those questions will be answered today in this mm -hmm. video. Cause I never yet asked my mom. This is the first time I'm actually gonna ask my mom these questions about my dad. And I feel like it's a great feeling that I'm gonna get answer that I'm gonna get from her. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, she's a little bit nervous. How you let, feeling? Let me see how much I can remember. Right. <laughs> it's a long time. So she's gonna try to remember, but I want you remember precisely, accurately, mm -hmm. and what's going on. Because <laughs> the, the most I can remember, I don't remember the day exactly why when he leaves. I don't know when my dad leaves. So that's the first question. When, at what age was I when my dad choose to walk out of your life? Cause he was with you, right? Uh, actually, you were three years old. You were attending the basic school. So I was three? Yes, you were three. Actually, he used to like come around. When you were smaller, he was there for you. I'm not gonna lie, he was there for you when you were small. When you were a baby, mm -hmm. he's, he was there for you. He used to take you out dress you, take you out, bring you on the street, you know? And because you look like him, he used to come and say, people are listening that, I made this one, I made this one, so. <laughs> Actually, he wasn't, he, was, he wasn't a bad person. He was a nice person to me. He used to treat me good, I'm not lying. He used to treat me like a queen, a princess. He, he, like queen. he know how to, how to treat a woman, right? He really knows how to do that. But I don't know what got into him. You were about, you were about three years old when he left. And he left for a long time, and me being me, I don't really think I should like go and look for him or follow him. Right, or right. I'm, I just think of just working and taking care of business. That's that's me. I'm not the type of girl that gonna take him, try to find him, take him to court or anything like that. No, I'm not that type of person. I just feel like I should, it's my responsibility because I just want to just take care of my kids. Just work, I, I always working, always working, taking care of my kids. So, actually, I can't say he was a bad person, but I don't know why he just get up and he left. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, right? How would you rate him as a dad on what scale of 1 to 10? On a scale of 1 to 10, when he was there. Yeah, when he was there. When he was there, I will say he was an 8. He was an 8. And on a scale of 1 to 10, how was he as a boyfriend? Or, or, or a baby daddy to you at the time when he was there. He was he was he was ten because he was a 10. he's he's loving, he's kind. He was he was a really nice person. Which I don't I don't know if he is still right now, but honestly, he was really a nice person to me. He treats me well. He even helps take care of your elder brother, brother and, sister. and sister. Yes. He was a he was a nice person. So um on the on the period when you got when he when he chose to leave, right? Were you guys on good terms or bad terms? We weren't on, on any bad terms, but I guess like I remember he was doing business in Martin Bay. Right. Cause he was doing business in Martin Bay and no he he lived in Kingston. Mm hmm So he did stop doing business in Martin Bay, so I guess maybe uh, that's what I'm saying, maybe that's the reason why I left. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But as I said, me being a person that I am you leave, I'm not gonna come and look for you. That's me. I'm sorry because it's. I don't think it's my responsibility to to 
try to find you to let to take pressure you to take care of your child. It's your responsibility. You are you. You should be the person that reach out, right. reach out to me to assist me with your child. I am not the one supposed to be running a, running around searching for you to take care of your child. And I think he blamed me for that too because I remember I heard that he went he did went to England. And during the time he was in England, he did nothing for you, nothing at all. He didn't he didn't even try to reach out. And I think there was a time when he came back to St. Thomas and and we spoke, we spoke, and he said that the reason why he didn't assist you when he was in England because he didn't have any like address or number or anything for me. You have no contact. That he didn't have any contact for me. That's the only reason why he didn't try to reach out to help you. That's what I clearly remember. That's right. exactly what I clearly remember. All right, guys. So, um, so my dad basically leave when I was three years, three years. old. And he came back. When he came back, I was what age? It, there, there was once when he visited you. He just came back and on, 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 I think it was like you were about six. Cause I think I remember that time. I think you were about back. six. I remember when and he came. When he came back, and he, he gave me a biscuit. He just come and visit. He just was passing through and mm -hmm. stopped by, and he and, and he and he came and he and he and he saw you. And you was telling me so that he walked past me. Yes, because. You were you were you were at the neighbor house outside and he was passing you and the lady said to him, Oh you passing us something like that. He wow. didn't even recognize you. So well, my, when my dad he didn't came even back recognize you at the age of six. When my dad came back when I was six, he walked past me, didn't recognize he didn't who I recognize was that you. that was the son he was walking was, past. He was coming to, to he was coming over to my house because he he just walked through the the neighbor yard coming over to my house and he because he was coming to look for you and he passed you there and the lady said, oh, you passing your son like that? And then he, he turned and he, and he picked you up. Wow. So I, that was at six. I think I remember during those time when he gave me a cookie. It was a biscuit that I think Joy was selling. Yes, he did And he, he bought it for, for me. For you and some other children so that was there. My there. friend Super and all them was there and he bought me the, the, the cookie. And after that, that was the last time I remember seeing my dad during those period though. And I remember as a kid, small kid, I used to be on the main road asking every guy, are you my dad, are you my dad? Remember that? You remember that, eh? <laughs> you don't remember those times, right? I remember I as a kid. Remember. I remember as a kid, right? As a young kid, I used to be on the main street where people walk past and asking, are you my father? Like, I really ask. But, you know, I was just a kid. I, I, I never really understand. He, and he did came back again. He came again when I was in ninth grade. Yeah, and I think I was at work. I was at work and I came home in the night and my, my daughter said to me, guess who was here? And I said, ooh, and he said, Winston. And Winston came and he came and looked for you. He was passing through and stopped by and looked for you. I remember that time, but I didn't see him. I didn't get to see him that That, that was in ninth grade. That was in ninth grade. I remember that. And the, you know, the reason, when he came and looked for you, I was, I was happy he did because I remember you were always saying that you always said to me that why why your dad why 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 are you not seeing your dad because every you see everybody have their their dad coming to look for them and why 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 you're not seeing your dad and you said to me that um it was me who let your dad left and I said to you that no I did not let I didn't I wasn't the one who let your let, let your dad leave and I was then I sit back and I was thinking to myself I said. God, please let he just show up one day so he, this this that this boy can see who his dad is because he was grown you were grown enough now to know mm -hmm. and I was there and I said I I always pray to God and say God please just let him even come back and so he can see what his dad look like because he understand everything now and it did happen because it happened because when I was coming from work I mean I, when I get home my daughter said to me Mommy, guess who just leave here? And I said, no, who? And he said, Winston. But he was waiting to see me, but because I didn't, I oh. take so long to get back, get back home, he left. So, and then I said, yes, thank God. He's big enough, so you know who his dad is. I think I remember those times. Yeah. That time when he came during those period, he asked for me to make him cereal, cornflakes. And I, and I made him cereal. 
and then I asked for it again. But I didn't call him that. I remember, he's not around. I, I, I'm not used to calling nobody that. I'm not used to calling him that. He just he just come around again, and he asked for it again. But when I when I make the cereal, I give it to him. I said, "Hey, I didn't say daddy here. I said here, hey." And he get upset. He, I remember he yeah, get I really remember, upset. I remember. He get really upset. Like who you calling here? Like you know you get really upset on me. But I, I wasn't used to me be calling him that, so it wasn't something that was comfortable for me, you know. And then he get upset. And I, I remember he leave, he leave that day, and I never seen him again. And I think one long time again, cause like it's like in and out, guys. Come on, visit one day gone, visit one day gone. So it's like after like three years passed again, he came and gave me a phone. Remember that flip phone? Yeah. He came and gave me a phone, a flip phone, during those time, and they robbed it. They robbed me, sent me up a gun in school, and robbed that phone from me. And um, I remember you called him, right? And it was just that. And I, I think from ever since, I never see him again. And um, I seen him. When it was time for you to go to college? College. When it's time for me to go to college, after I graduated high school, I found out. I met my aunt. That was his, his sister. No, you went down there. You went yeah, I went to. to I went to. Yeah, yeah, I went to. You, um, you get in, you you correspond with him on the phone, and he just tell you where he live, and you meet him. You remember you take the bus, and you meet him. You I meet think, him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You meet you on the road, and he take you to which part where he live. Yeah, I think I went to where he live, but yes. the time the time when I went there after after graduating high school, he was in jail. Yeah, oh. he wasn't there. He wasn't there, and then I leave my number to my aunt. Okay. And that's so my aunt called me and said meet her here in in town in Kingston, and I met, and I went and I meet my aunt. That's that's my my father's sister, and she she was the one that bailed him from jail for me to see him, and he came out of jail whatever, and that's like months after though he came out of jail, and I was staying outside in Portmore that that time because I was going to college. I'm, I met my aunt. She thought to help me to go to college, so she she and my uncle. Gave me like a place to stay in Portmore yeah, for me to go to college. So I was staying at my uncle's house for me to go to college. And then when my dad came out of jail, we went to visit him in jail before she actually bailed him. So me and my, and my other brothers and Paul's guys, my dad actually got 14 kids, which 14 boys, including me. So and it's not only me. I'm not, I'm not the only one who didn't really was there for. He wasn't there for none of us, to be honest. Maybe, maybe a few I don't know about, but... What I know so far, based on talking to my brothers, he wasn't really there for them as well. So it's like he was just out doing his thing. And I don't know what it is or what caused him to be that way, but I met him. He's a great person. He have a good heart. Like he would give his last to you and he would go like for example, he, last time he came, he gave his fear, his bus fare to me and he was asking somebody for the fear to go home. Like, you know, that's that's that person he is. He yeah, asked you, right? Yeah. So he, he asked me, and I I did give him the fare. So yeah, you, he said he used the last money he had and buy stuff for the kids them that you and your other friends. And he mm -hmm. said he didn't have any fear to go home, and I gave him the fare to go. Home. Okay, so that's him. You have a kind heart. Uh, even when I met him when I was in college, when my aunt bailed him from jail, I sit and I talked to him for for the time being, and he was just and he have a great sense of humor. Great sense he of humor. He let you laugh. You know. He's let, a person yeah, let you yes, laugh. Yes. He's always giving some jokes and letting you laugh. That's what he have a he have a, he have a good personality about him. I never asked him a lot because like I just never used to. I never really asked him a lot. I never really fully comfortable. But um, the time being there, after like after high school and college, whatever, knowing him, it was just it was alright. You know, it was just like a starting of a process to try to create that bond again, and then I end up coming to um, America. And um, that's the story, you know. Pretty much, I haven't seen him in a while. That's the story, but my, uh, listen, I don't know what was the main reason, and it's just life, you know. I'm not saying what it do is Maybe right. Maybe that's the way it was supposed to go. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was meant to happen that mm -hmm. way, cause I wouldn't, I wouldn't change nothing that happens. I'm, I'm happy the way my life played out. I'm happy that he wasn't there. Cause I'm happy with where I'm at in life right now. Maybe if it was there, I'll be somewhere else that we don't know. You know, can never happen. But I feel like I don't regret nothing. I don't regret the way my life turned out. I don't regret my mom. Even though my mom struggled, I, re I regret those days. And I really wanted us. I'm happy that we no, overcome. We, we have to struggle. It's you know, just, we went through the that's struggle. Just, that's just how it is. We struggle a lot. I see my mom cry the days, cry nights. 
the more you grow, you understand life. My mom cried a lot and pray and pray. I always pray. I always she always pray. pray. Always tell me to pray at always night. Pray, always yes. tell me to pray. She tell always, all of us to pray. Yeah. And always put God first. You know. Just pray for everything. Just and, pray. And my mom was strict. My mom was really strict. <laughs> And to be honest, at those times as a kid, I was I didn't understand why was she so strict. I remember one time as a kid, I, I said, I wish I, I wish I had a different mom. But now as a grown man, I appreciate the the way she raised me and the way she was strict on me with certain things, cause it raised me and molded me to become the man I am today. You know, so I feel like it was just meant to happen. And, and again, I growing your kids in the ghetto where you see things happening, you have to try to keep them on a straight part. Because they grow in the ghetto. They yeah, grow in church fun. corner, the ghetto. And there was a lot of things going on. There's a lot of person that doing things. And you as a mother, you, you, you're not going to want to see your children come doing bad things. So I am one of that parent. Yeah. So I try to keep them on a straight part. Just keep them straight, keep them focused. And I've never stopped them from school. Even though I struggle, I've never stopped them from school. Because mm -hmm. I always send them to school. They don't miss school days. Yeah. They don't miss school. All the way they miss school unless they are sick. And they have to be really sick to miss school. I send my kids to school. I make sure they go to school. And I make sure they have breakfast and drink a cup of tea before they... they Every they, morning. Every even morning. if I look and I, and I see the cup of tea on the table and they reach all halfway, halfway along the lane, by. I call, come here, come here, come here. I call them up, come and drink a cup of tea because I just want them to go to school with a cup of tea and eat something so they can go to school and focus. And they turn out to be great. I have, I have four wonderful, well-educated kids. They have education that I, I don't even have because I never um, graduate high school. I think I left high school at 11th grade, either 11 or 10th grade, I think I leave, I leave high school. I was at age 15, 16. 16, 17, going 17, yes. I left high school. I, I didn't even graduate. But I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm not stupid. Even though I don't graduate, I'm not stupid. But, but what I said, I said what I don't get, my kids have to get it. I, I always want to become a teacher. I remember that. I always want to become a teacher. When I was younger, like growing up with my cousins, we... This, we always play school. I said, let's play school. Who want to be the teacher? Me. I always wanted to be a teacher. My cousin always said, why you always wanted to be the teacher? Why? Why you always want to be a teacher? Because that's, that was my dream, to be a teacher. Yeah. And I didn't get to be a teacher, but my daughter, she's a teacher. She teach high school that she attended. See? Yeah. So I try to, I just try to mold my kids in the right way. And yes, I was a strict parent. I was a strict parent. Yes, my because really I want strict. my kids to, to come out to be great and I'm so proud of them I'm so proud of them I'm definitely proud of them definitely I have a teacher I have an engineer slash he do a lot of stuff so I can't even <laughs> say whatever he did I have an accountant and I have and I have Jaime he's in college right now he's doing he's, he's studying for business so I don't, yeah. I don't I don't regret nothing so all, all of our kids I don't regret nothing all four of them, I'm so proud of them. All of, They're all like, four educated. All of educated. her kids graduated, graduated college and four her younger son kids, is so. in college right now. So, I'm, I'm so I feel like the biggest, the biggest um, challenge was for you, um, you have to leave us to go, go to work. Yes, you and to then... Leave us but to you, go to another country to work. At the same time, you were, you were, you were well grown and know what... I was, in, I, was, yeah, I was 14, well 13, yes. 14, so I was growing yeah, up and I was true as a responsibility, so I, I know to cook, I know to do a lot of stuff, take care of myself and, as a and, man. And my, my daughter, she, she, she did a lot. You know, so li life wasn't easy, but trust me, my mom make it and happen. And I never let you guys hungry. She make us eat, we never go starving, no matter how broke we are, we are my mom make it happen. She rather go starving and make sure that we always, as our kids eat. I always make sure that I have a work. We all go to school, sure she find ways to make it and happen. And I always guys. buy groceries, I just buy groceries and stuff of groceries just to make sure that they have something to eat. So. And, it's awesome. And our neighbor kids could come over and eat also. And you know, I love, all my I love friends, kids. all my friends also. Yeah, <laughs> and they just come over and everybody eats. So. I miss my friends. I miss all my we're friends. We're blessed. I think we are blessed. We are blessed, guys. Are so blessed. guys, listen. That's it. Blessed. I feel like it was a great, great conversation. I appreciate it, Mom. I thank you so much. I love it all my heart. And I, love I you can't as well. wait. Can't wait to 
make life happen for us, you know, it's just a matter of time. And guys, thank you guys so much for the support, you know, and I know it's not easy for a single parent, for a single mom doing it. It's not easy at all, especially when you got like more than one kids. And definitely not it's easy. Not easy. Put, your, put your mind to it and just trust God. Just trust God. And God will God will see you through. God yeah. always see me through. Always. So, with that being said guys, hope you guys enjoy this video. Like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment, let me know what you think about us. And if you're going through a case where your dad not around, don't give up. Let's have faith and yeah. think positive in every yes. situation. You teach me that. Yes. Think positive in every situation. Yes. Even when it's a negative situation, you just think positive. Yeah. Yeah. Just Hope you guys positive. enjoy this video. Like, share, subscribe. King Shane is out. Mm -hmm.